true is a crush, your girl Karina here, and happy, happy, blessed Friday! And today is the very first Friday of October! Okay, friends, the last time I filmed this podcast episode was in September, and now we are in October. So, friends, every single day is a day to not be wasted because blink, and it'll be November, and then blink, it's Christmas, and then it's just like, huh? We're in 2024. Like, I'm not trying to fast track the last four months of this entire 2023. However, it should be a kind reminder to us that every single day is a day to not waste and to just perish within the world and to perish within our own worries and our own disappointments within ourselves. No, no. Every single day they wake up is a blessing for you to maximize it, to maximize your potential. And so, with that said, you must go to Mass today, which is the very first Friday dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so every single first Friday and very first Saturday of each month is beautiful days. Why? Very first Friday is dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And then Saturday is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So don't be lazy. Don't make excuses. Keep on striving for greatness. Despite of your fallbacks, despite of your setbacks, despite of anything that you kind of regret making a choice about, just persevere. Persevere in faith is ultimately the best weapon against the enemy trying to lure us back into our old ways of perishing in the world. So with that said, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast episode. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And literally, if you are not subscribed to the fam, please do. And I've been told, I was actually kindly informed that a lot of my viewers are actually from Apple. So thank you so much. I literally thought it was from Spotify. But either way, though, wherever you're watching this, thank you so much. Whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> And any platform that you're watching, thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that said, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to this family and be greatly appreciated because why every single of these videos are always dedicated to God our Father in the day and especially your Muslim on the way. So with that said, thank you so much and let's get started! <laughs> about perseverance in prayer now now I kind of like wink wink nudge nudge about it in my intro I don't know what this was <laughs> I kind of wink wink nudge nudge about it in my intro video because it is a hard topic that hits home to all of us for sure after unpacking the big topic about discovering God's will and pursuing God's will the next crucial step is what persevering in prayer right because when you attempt in actually pursuing God's will, obviously the enemy is just going to be like attacking left, right, and center and the different desperate tactics that he can find. So the next ultimate weapon that we got to persevere is in prayer. And that is a big key step that we all have to do because obviously the enemy will try to deceive us and make us feel like heavy hearted and make us feel disappointed within ourselves or discouragement. And then you're just sitting there like, really? <laughs> yeah. And it does happen. It's a big topic that hits home to a lot of us, especially I myself included. So I hope you all are keeping yourselves equipped with the scripture. Hence that little bit. <laughs> I mean, a little dramatic. But anyways, for sure, we got to keep ourselves very equipped with scripture because this is the big game changer that will keep your eyes peeled in regards to how the enemy will try to deceive you. And when you have the word of Christ, the word of God at the back of your mind, in the bottom of your heart, you will spot it so easily. You'll be like, really? Like, I thought you knew that. No, not, I'm not saying go play around the enemy. I'm just saying that it will make you realize that you will have a whole new vision. You will have a whole set of eyeglasses on every single day. And you're going to be so like why did I not do this like before? So that is what I'm saying, friends. So you must keep yourselves equipped with the word of Christ. So keep make it as a routine to constantly put Christ first, like to start your day and to obviously fill your mind and your heart with the word of God. So you can obviously hit the enemy left, right and center and be like, okay, like, no, no, I'm putting Christ first and you can shush. Anyways, let's start off with scripture from Gospel of St. Luke, 
chapter 11 verse 9 to 10 okay let's go find this out actually friends side note i highly recommend you get these these like tabs because it's so easy to find books like let fry and censor within scripture instead of just being like where am i anyways just a little recommendation there so luke chapter 11 verse 9 to 10 okay here we go here we go here we go see how i found like so easily <laughs> anyways 10 chapter 11 okay because it's very crucial that when we preach in some way and proclaiming the word of god we must always have scripture as a way to be like okay like i know what i'm talking about and so if you're a priest bishop seminarian or deacon watching this feel free to add more down below and comment down below because i would love to hear it anyways so here we go okay here we go and how do we even have it <laughs> okay chapter 11 verse 9 to 10. okay here so i say to you ask and will be given to you search and you will find knock and the door will be open to you for everyone who's asked receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened so how is this in relation to perseverance and prayer you gotta humbly ask god for whatever you your heart desires with pure intentions okay you don't treat god like a little vending machine or a fortune teller be like, lord i can't want this where is it no mm -mm, mm -mm. try to not fall into that trap by listening to this verse and be like okay well i'm gonna treat god like a fortune teller or like a vending machine and if it gives you like the drink you don't like it's like no no mm. when it comes to humbly praying for what your heart desires just humbly be like lord whatever your will is da -da 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 -da. right and you gotta persevere in that because obviously the enemy will just like whisper in one of your ears and just be like hey stop praying what are you doing buddy yeah no we gotta ask humbly humbly ask that that is why i always love praying beginning with i humbly ask as unworthy as I am, fill in the blank. It's short, sweet, and it comes from my heart. Make it your own niche, whatever works for works best for you, that will honestly come genuinely from your heart. You must not be asking God in like a, huh, okay, I have no other choice, so I'm gonna pray to you. No, no, we gotta be joyfully rejoicing as much as we can so that when you persevere in prayer, it leads to itself by an increase of trust, okay? As you humbly ask God in your day-to-day -day life for whatever your heart desires, it does increase your humility because it allows you to be more submissive to what God has planned for you and therefore tearing away that stubbornness side of yours, okay? It's a great, great way to persevere in prayer. And essentially, our Blessed Mother Mary, she, again, as I say all the time, she is the best example to how she humbled herself before God, saying her humble yes, her humble unconditional yes, to saying yes to being the mother of God. So that is why we got to keep on persevering in prayer so that our prayer will be effective, okay? Prayer isn't effective when it's not real. Okay, when you humbly ask God in like a sad, depressed, and like mad way, it's not going to be fruitful because it's going to lean over towards a sense of like desperation. And then obviously the enemy's just like waiting for you to fall right into his hands. Be like, hello, remember that talk we had before? Anyways, but I'm trying to make a point that when it comes to prayer, make it effective. Make it effective so that you'll be 100% real. Even if you're not vocally saying your prayer, as long as it comes from the heart, tears will genuinely fall from your eyes naturally. Trust me, go before Jesus Christ during adoration and try it. Go, go, go. That is why it's so essential that we must do what? Adoration on a weekly basis, not just like a monthly basis, but make a constant effort to go on a weekly basis. I highly recommend St. Michael's Cathedral. If you're living in Toronto, they literally have adoration every single day, Monday to Friday. Just shout out to St. Michael's because I kind of go there <laughs> regularly. And yes, they do. 
Right after the 1210 Mass, they literally have it there exposed of our Lord Jesus Christ until right before the 5.30 p.m. Mass, the benediction happens. So if you're in downtown Toronto or if you're kind of looking for a daily adoration, I highly recommend that spot. If you're a priest or a pastor, an associate pastor, literally watching this and you're like, what about my parish? Comment down below or talk to you in private. I'd love to talk to you or meet you. <laughs> Because I love discovering new parishes within Toronto or outside the GTA or in Hamilton or in Peterborough or elsewhere because it's great. It's great to allow the Lord to lead you to different adventures. Think about it with Jesus Christ when he traveled from town to town proclaiming the word of God. He was not stuck in Jerusalem. Okay, actually Jerusalem was his like main hardcore spot. But before he went to Jerusalem, he went to different towns. So doesn't mean like you're in Toronto doesn't mean you're gonna be stuck in Toronto no like if the Lord leads you to venture outside of where your comfort zone is like your region zone don't be afraid to be like okay like I know I'm gonna meet new people I know I'm following the word of the will of God so I'll just go with the flow and then I'll just discover new things I'm like what so that's what I'm saying. You gotta, gotta be open to how the Lord speaks to your heart and to how the Lord leads you so that you can persevere in prayer despite the storms that go against you, left, right, and center. Because we must be strong, vivid, bold, confident warriors, okay? Not just walking around like scared warriors, okay? No, no. We gotta be bold, we gotta be confident, and therefore when we pray... We got to be that same way too, being bold and being confident and truly believing that whatever you humbly ask for will come true in God's time and God's will. Perseverance. Perseverance. So God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So if you are at that state right now, like denial that you know what God's will is, but then you're like stubbornly saying no, because I don't think I am right for this. I don't think I'm fit for this. So therefore I'm going to run away like a chicken. Seriously. So you got to be more humble, humbleness of heart. Okay. Humility. Humility is such a big aspect in perseverance and prayer because when you allow God to see through your heart, despite all the dirt, despite all the nooks and crannies that you don't want God to see, Humility of heart, okay? So think about the fact that God will hear you loud and clear when you're more humble. And don't be, don't let that stubbornness get to you. Don't let that stubborn side of you speak louder than your willingness to pursue God's will. See, that's another thing too. Fear. Fear, denial, and stubbornness are just the complete opposite of humility. Think about that. Think about that. Because when you allow fear to speak louder than your willingness of heart to pursue God's will, obviously you're going to gravitate towards that fear. So whenever you ever hear the voice of fear speak loud, shut it down with humility. That is why you run to a blessed mother Mary to combat that that fear because that's how the enemy feeds into our into our souls through fear he speaks to us with those little whispers and be like can't do it look at you you and etc cetera, etc cetera. so we must not tire of prayer praying because thinking that your prayers will not be heard so if you're sitting there right now it's like yeah but i don't kind of hear my prayers being heard because i'm not seeing it persevere okay god's time that's why i always remind myself that when i pray i always end it off with according to your time according to your time that little ending is so important because it helps us to realize that we're not just asking 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 and not allowing ourselves to be humble accepting his time remember that so when you Begin your prayer with, like, I humbly ask, I know where I am, blank, according to your time and according to your will. I recommend that, but make it your own. Make it your own that you know it's, like, 
this is mine and I know this is me speaking from my heart. So make it your own. Find your own little like simple but humble prayer that will enable you to be more humble in the eyes of God. Try. Because that is one mistake and trap that we tend to follow is thinking that like, okay, I'm praying, but like, getting answers like yeah obviously that frustration is going to start to slowly kick in so that's we combat that and be like according to your time and believing that it will be god's time as well too you know seeing it from their heart is one thing but also believing it is another element to it which is very very important because if you just say it without believing it god can see right through that there's no hiding remember god can see everything in your heart in your mind so there's no telling god to like okay there's like a filter so i'm good this is not a breeda okay this is not breeda water okay that there was a filter and it's gonna filter all the junk no it doesn't work that way god can see right through your heart despite of how you can deceive everybody around you there's no hiding so when, these are conditions that are required in all successful petitions. Okay? Listen cl closely and carefully. Four conditions required for all successful petitions. Number one, it's faith. Number two, humility. Number three, perseverance. And number four is confidence. Okay? Faith, humility, perseverance and confidence is very very important sorry with the hand motions but i'm very anime like that so but i'm not italian anyways side note four elements okay those are the very important conditions that we must 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 always think about every time we humbly ask for a petition i have saint joseph saint anne our blessed mother and jesus christ and god our father and the holy spirit obviously I always try to make a conscious effort to humbly ask for their intercession, okay? Whenever you ask for a petition or something that you truly desire from the bottom of your heart, call upon our lady. Call upon your patron saint. It works, okay? But you got to persevere in that. Keep on asking. Keep on praying about it. Don't just ask for it one time and then call it a day and just be like... <sighs> I didn't see it, so like, I'm gonna kind of walk away. To, no. It's a constant installation here, okay? It's not just a one-time installation payment and then like you walk the other way. No, it's a constant, 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 constant battle between the enemy and yourself when you persevere in prayer. So that is why praying whatever you humbly desire from your heart one time is not enough. Remember that. So whenever you have a spare moment, humbly ask in that quiet moment there. Genuinely, from your heart, okay? Not just being like, okay, well, got no options left. So like, my only option left. No. Literally. You got to be strong enough within yourself and be like, hey, God's time. Okay, I'm going to try and I'm not going to chicken out. Now, I'm not going to let the voice of my fear speak louder than my actual determination, ambition mode. And I know it's going to happen because I believe that God will pave the way when there's no way. So, true prayer, okay? True prayer is effective, okay? When you humbly ask from the bottom of your heart, it will be true. Because God will see it. And God will validate that it is true. Not just like this. No. Okay, so that's why we got to think about at times that our Lord teaches us not to become discouraged and give up in our request. Okay, there's literally a specific passage in the scripture that speaks about how God, how Jesus, when Jesus was traveling from town to town, there was actually a lady that approached Jesus about being healed. And initially she was like, he kind of brush it off but then she persevered and then Jesus saw through her heart because of her strong faith and right there and then she got healed we gotta pray with the right intention though that's so crucial that is why whatever you're praying for and it comes with bad intentions God can see that God can see that 
Especially if you're like blinded right now. I'm talking about spiritually, not physically. Yeah, I can see through that. So, despite what you're humbly, humbly, humbly praying for and asking for, God can see through that. So, obviously you have to and must believe that it will come true according to God's time and that God will make a way. You gotta believe in yourself and you must believe in the petition that you humbly ask that it will come true, if not better. So, he hears us and he listens to us. God's not sleeping, he's not chilling on a beach, and he's not deaf, okay? Every moment, every moment throughout the day, he listens to us. He can see through your heart, despite how happy you look on the outside, God can see through that. And you're like, how you, and God can see how you re are really feeling in the inside. So, let's go back to scripture, shall we? According to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verse 11. Okay, so when it comes to scriptures, be very mindful that if you have any questions, always ask your spiritual director, priest, pastor, deacon, seminary, go talk to them because, or bishop too, if you're a bishop, thank you so much for watching this. Literally, ask questions, okay? Knowing about the faith is growing deeper, so therefore asking questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. You got to be curious to grow deep in your faith. Curious to learn more. Right? Anyways, so chapter 2, verse 11. Here we come. Okay. Jesus said this, did this. The first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Okay. When it comes to perseverance and prayer, it's not just about seeing proof. Like, oh, now I believe. No. Perseverance is pra in prayer is also believing when you're not seeing. Because realize, friends, that God sees the bigger picture of what we cannot see behind the scenes. So we may not be seeing something, but God's working behind the scenes of the, the entire situation. So, perseverance and prayer is also believing when we don't see and, and trusting that in God's time we will see. So, we got to think about it, friends. God can also foresee the assistance we will require and the graces that will lead us to make our request. So, given by that, God can see what we need and God can see what we will be humbly asking in a certain time. Because maybe perhaps you being in a certain situation and he will listen to you. It's just a matter of you having the humility to humbly ask. Don't be stubborn and be like, okay, Lord, you know what? I don't need you anymore because like, ah, I'm going to handle myself now. No. This is not like a my way or a highway situation. This is like God's way is the only way. Because why? Jesus said it. And you know it very well. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's clear, it's clear, crystal clear. So take it seriously, friends, that despite of what situation you're in right now, God can see through everything. So despite of you humbly asking for something at right now, God will hear you. God will pave the way for you when there's no way. There's so many testimonies from the bottom of my heart that I can attest to in regards to God paving ways that blew my mind. I'm not over exaggerating, it's true. But I'm not here to like say them all. I'm here to just tell you that perseverance in prayer is such a huge pillar that we must keep strong within our hearts. Think about it, friends. If we do not ask, we will not receive the graces we require. So if you're feeling down right now, or if you're gonna save denial, or like kind of feeling like, I shouldn't have done something that I should have done. Run to Christ. Run to God. Run to Our Lady. And humbly ask. To pave the way when there's no way. It's very important that we believe in that. Because the fact that God did it for Moses, think about it. 
you paved the way for Moses, like the Red Sea, okay? <laughs> Think about the beautiful things God has done. Literally, it's all in the scriptures. He's done great things, especially for the prophet Daniel as well. He shut the mouth of the lion in the den. If you can do that, if you can part the Red Sea for Moses, he can do beautiful wonders in your life. Think about that. So whatever state that you're in right now, do not despair. Do not be discouraged. Do not fall into temptation. Do not fall away from our Lord, but rather draw yourself closer. Draw yourself closer to God our Father so that he will hear you and he will heal you of whatever ailments that you have right now. And you gotta believe it. You gotta believe in yourself. And you got to believe in God doing great wonders in your life. Let him show you. Just humbly go before the Lord and be like, Lord, I'm confused. Lord, I don't know what's going on. Lord, I'm confused with myself. I'm kind of lost. Please guide the way. Help me to pursue what, is it, what it is that you ask of me. And give me the strength to do that and to fulfill it with boldness and confidence. That's all it takes, friends. It's very, very simple. It's just the willingness of the flesh that's always holding us back, right? So as we intensify our demands, friends, we will identify our will with God's will in due time. That's the thing that you will learn. As you persevere in prayer and from there, you will actually identify more your plans and your will with God's will in time. In time. That's one of the beautiful things that I love to see. That the more I humbly ask more demands in some way, with pure intentions, the more I see like, okay, yeah, yeah, now I get why. I was led here to see this, da, 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 and so on and so forth. And it's beautiful. Just seeing the whole orchestration of God work working is just mind-blowing. But have the willingness of heart to see it for yourself. And then let your heart really truly see how God's really working in your life without you knowing it. So our prayers has to be filled with trust and confidence and boldness, and ambition, okay? We can't just be trusting in God because, like, we hit rock bottom. No. You trust God in your good times and your bad. You humbly ask with full trust. Not with a half-heartedness of vibe. Just being like, okay, I'm, I humbly ask for this, but then, like, your trust is, like, down the drain. No. When you're humbly asking for something, have the fullness of trust in that petition. So that, so that it will enable you to actually truly believe that it will happen according to God's time. It's very important. Trust, okay? You're looking at me probably like, oh, I got trust in using myself. Like, no, okay? If you have issues like that, offer it to God. Be like, I need help in growing in trust within myself, in you, in my faith, in my whole entire life. Give me the opportunity to do that. Watch God give you all the opportunities to be more trustful in his will. Watch, watch, watch. So, therefore, when you develop more trust in God, humbly asking beautiful petitions, it will lead you to be more consistent in prayer. Therefore, persevering in prayer. Because the more you trust, the more God will pay the way for you. You gotta believe it though, which is so important. And I've been saying that a lot, cause it's true. It's true and 100% believe in it. So friends, take it seriously that when you're humbly persevering in prayer, that you do it because you love God, you trust God, you're confident in God, and you believe that God will make it happen for you. Don't just sit there humbly asking for God and then having the sense of like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. No, just give it to God, offer it up, call it a day, and wait and see. 
Don't just sit there and eat popcorn and wait. No, just go about your life with confidence and not just sitting there being lazy and stop making excuses, friends. I just want to share one last scripture with you because it really hit me in terms of ministry in general. However you're involved in volunteering for the church, think about this scripture, friends. In chap in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, okay? This is talking about concerning self-deception, which is pretty scary, which is scarier than anything that can happen in this world. So, here we go. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, but we did not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name. Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Friends, it's very serious that however God called you to be involved in the church in any way, you take it seriously that you're not doing it because of selfish reasons. But you're doing it because you love God and not expecting anything in return. Perhaps like money or anything monetary or tangible things. You do it because you love God and you just love doing it and you have a gift that you want to share to glorify God at the end of the day, not expecting anything in return, but only God's love, which is always guaranteed to us. So think about that, friends. That is the most scariest thing ever. Literally, Jesus telling you, go away from me, evildoers. I do not know you. It's scary. So we got to be prepared. We already know what we need to do. It's just a matter of actually doing it right so i just wanted to leave you off with that final passage and let it ponder and brew in your heart that when you go off in your day-to-day routine that you're persevering in prayer trying and striving to follow the will of god so with that said thank you so much for tuning into another podcast episode i'm so proud of you i'm so blessed to have you with me in my journey and with that said God bless, and I'll see you all soon in my next podcast episode next week. God willing, God's time, and as I always love to say in all my podcast videos, don't be afraid to be true words of Christ. Bye. See you soon.